Hanin, Buju, Nadinwe Meganak, Makade Bene Sanishnakas, Migazidotem. Hi, it's Jamie here, and I'm just having a quick smudge, and I'm gonna jump into talking about the July full moon. And for you. Okay. So I was going to do um, an in-person full moon ceremony, but the place where I normally do it, uh, I guess the building was closed for the day and I missed the memo, so here's a video instead. And it's important to talk about the full moon because the moon affects the waters on Earth. And because our bodies are mostly made up of water, you know, that old saying of, you know, it must be a full moon, people are acting crazy. Literally, that's what it is. So if you've noticed anything, you know, people's interactions are a little bit different or off, um, that could be part of it. <laughs> so just a little bit of time and patience and kindness for each other around this time and just some understanding can go a long way. So for the full moon, um, for the July full moon, I've heard four different names and I feel like most of them are self-explanatory, but it's great to talk about them because adding a little bit of knowledge or a little bit of understanding about what's happening in nature at this time. Because for me, the, I follow those full moons that literally make the most sense for the time of season that we're in. So one of the names that I've heard of is the Buck Moon. And this is when, um, right now, the animals in North America who have antlers, such as deer or elk or moose, in the springtime they shed so they drop those antlers and then right now is like the prime growing season so their antlers are actually covered with velvet and their antlers have a very rich blood supply to grow their antlers to pretty significant sizes and each year that they shed when they grow their, their antlers again in the next season or the, sorry the next year I should say um, they usually add another time and so if you've heard of a two-point buck or a five-point buck, you can usually infer the approximate age of that animal based on how many tines they have on their antlers. So that's always interesting to know. It's also interesting to know that that velvet is, it has healing qualities to it and it requires a significant blood supply. And that's part of the reason why it's so soft, like it feels like velvet and so if you've taken a cross section, so if their antlers grow like this and you cut it here, you would actually see closer to the, the base of the skull, the holes where the blood supply would be, would be larger. And then out toward the tines, if you cut it there, those holes are so small that you'd only be able to see them with a microscope. And that's because to grow to, if you've ever seen like a deer with a very, very large rack, um, it requires a significant blood supply to be able to grow you know to that size in a season and they're not as strong right now because they have a significant blood supply so if you took that cross section those holes seem even bigger in this time versus the fall time when they're done growing and they're literally rubbing against trees and stuff to get all that velvet off and then they're using them as you know, defense mechanism. They, they have their hoofs still the, the, the entire time, but male deer will, you know, in full rut, will compete for grazing space. They'll compete for females to breed with and also to, um, for self-defense when they encounter other creatures in the, in, out in the wild. So that's all I can really say that I, I've heard about the buck moon. The next name for this moon that I've heard is the raspberry moon. So around this time, the raspberries are typically ready to be picked. And, you know, being at the Sundance grounds this past weekend, wandering through the bushes to go pick out our trees for the arbor, definitely I saw raspberries that were ready to go. And it was almost, you know, one of my friends, they were fasting and they had to go out to the bush and they were thinking, oh, raspberries. And they're like, wait, I can't eat that right now, I'm fasting. And, but you just, you just see those raspberries out in the wild and they're so plump and juicy looking. And so those plants are ready to pick. So whether you're using uh, the fruit uh, or if you're picking the leaves, now's the best time because they're ready to go. 
The next name that I've heard for this moon is the Thunder Moon. And again, this past weekend, there was a fantastic storm that rode through the province and the sky, people were commenting all over the place that, you know, the sky looks like really ominous and uh, there was, you know, lots of thunder, lots of lightning. And, uh, but it didn't seem like a whole lot of rain in a lot of places. It seemed to be more concentrated in a few different spots. We've also had a few uh, tornadoes go through the province, but hopefully with not too much damage. I, I don't really follow that that news or information too much to be able to track that. But that thunder moon, I heard one person say a story that this is when um, those spirits, they're having their ceremony, and that thunder is that drum that they're using for ceremony. And that's why sometimes those storms, those thunderstorms are so much longer is because those spirits are having their own ceremonies on that side. I thought that was a really beautiful thing to hear. We never look at it that way necessarily, or unless you're really into, you know, the storytelling, you might not have heard that before. And so the final name that I've heard for this particular moon is uh, the Molting Feather or Molting Bird Moon. And, you know, back in uh, earlier in the, in the year, in May, the egg moon, those little birds were just in little eggs. And now they've been growing all the way up until this point. And so they've been growing in size and uh, their little floofy feathers are starting to drop, to molt and to be replaced with more of the flight feathers. So that as they grow further into the season, and they start experimenting with literally flying the nest um, that they actually have the flight feathers necessary to support that flight so if it's if you're the type to go out and collect feathers especially you know for us for eagle feathers for example if you know where to go this would be a great time to go out you know go on a nature walk and see what you find out in the bush so that's the four names for the moons that I've heard at this point. If you want to share another name for this full moon, um, absolutely please do. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I always encourage healthy discussion and sharing. So that's all I'm going to share in this video. I hope you're having a great day and uh, hope you're having a great time visiting with friends and family this beautiful summer season. We'll see you again.